with all the teams that are struggling, because there are a few, it's not just Real Madrid across Europe, we keep seeing the name Mauricio Pochettino trending on Twitter. It keeps coming up. It did amongst many of the Madridistas after that loss against Shakhtar. And it got me thinking, what's going to happen with Zinedine Zidane? Is he on the hot seat or will it always be that the president Florentino Perez will always back him? And it would take Zidane having to, to walk away again if he were to leave the role. Things can change very quickly at Real Madrid. We know that. It only takes a couple of defeats in a row, as we've seen this week, for the pressure to really start to build. Now, of course, Zidane is different. Zidane is special. No one really has the amount of credit uh, that Zidane has in terms of what he means at this club and in terms of what he's, what he's won. But the pressure is growing, and it would increase with a defeat in El Clasico. There's no doubt about that. I think it is unlikely still that the club would, would sack Zidane, whatever happened in, in El Clasico. But the one thing I would say with Zidane, the one note of caution... I would sound is that because I think Zidane is, is a bit of a different case to most managers. Don't get me wrong. He loves, he loves being a coach. I think he loves especially being out on the training ground with the players, but you could always see him walking away. If he honestly looked at himself, looked at the team, looked at the performances and felt like he wasn't the right man for, for the job. I don't think that's something we can rule out if this, this run of form continues much longer. But like you say, I think it would be a, a little while yet before the club moved to sack him. Although let's not forget that, a year ago, in very similar circumstances, when Madrid had started the season with a loss to PSG in the Champions League, they were beaten by Real Mallorca in La Liga, and they went and played Galatasaray, I think, exactly a, a year ago. Uh, there's a lot of talk that if they hadn't won that game, Zidane might have, been, might have been out. So like I say, because this club is so unique and because the demands are, are so high, even a figure like Zidane isn't immune to, to that kind of pressure. Just so it's not all doom and gloom, what positives can the Madrid fans take from what we've seen so far or just looking forward and looking ahead? Well, let's not forget, this is only two games. Before that, they started the season OK with a draw and then three wins in La Liga. They're the champions of La Liga, let's not forget. And they put together an amazing run at the end of last season to win the league ahead of Barcelona. I mentioned Thibaut Courtois. His form is still, is still exceptional and that's good news. Sergio Ramos might well be fit for, for the Clasico. There are doubts about that. We're not 100% sure, but certainly our information is that he's hoping to be, to be OK. They've still got a huge amount of quality. You still look at that midfield with Castanero and Cross and, and Modric. That's still, I, I think, is, as good as it gets pretty much for, for any club. And Karim Benzema, as I, as I say, is an exceptional footballer as, as well. And they do have a lot of these exciting young players who might still come good. It's just that maybe they can't be relied upon in the same way that they've relied upon some of these veterans over the last few years. Let's get to Barcelona because things aren't much better there, if at all. But it's been a bit of an up and down start to the season for them. Definitely more of an up this week with a big Champions League result for them. A loss last weekend in La Liga, which means both teams are coming into El Clasico on the back of a loss in La Liga. And let's start by talking about Ronald Koeman because we're seeing something very different to what we've seen with other Barca coaches in recent history where he actually does not so much criticise them, but definitely call his players out in the fact that he says even players like Messi, yeah, he's not at his best at the moment and then he'll follow it up saying, but he's been doing well in training and he's my captain, la la la. We've seen him criticising Griezmann. We'll get to that in a minute, but this is definitely a different approach to what we've seen recently from Barca coaches, isn't it? Yeah, Kuman's such a big character. I think he's not afraid to say what he thinks. I think that the things that he says, he does it for a reason. But I think sometimes he's going to walk a bit of a tightrope. And as you mentioned, we saw that, I think, with those messy comments where he made the initial comment. And then he looked to walk it back a, a little bit. He's being very, very careful. We know how delicate the messy situation is at Barcelona with what happened this summer. And it's still ongoing. There's still this ongoing row at the, at the club between the players and the captains and the board over, over pay cuts and things like that. So, of course, he wants to be careful with, with Messi. The Griezmann situation, how that's being managed is, is also very interesting. But like I say, Kuman is such a character that he's not going to be afraid to say what he thinks. In terms of his, his team, I think it's still too early really to make any judgments. They've, they started the season OK. They had that slip up against Hetafe. They rectified it in the Champions League uh, against a, a team you'd expect them to, to beat at home. And it's games like this Classico that I think will, will allow us to start to form some, some real judgments about Kuman's Barca and how they look. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.